All right, well, Emmett, stick with us for this next bit because we're going to talk about the big game of the weekend, which turned out to be a bit of a non-event. Uh, John Bruin is ready to chat about it. John, why so little spark, do you think, at uh, Stamford Bridge? I think there's a there's a few factors to that. Um, I think I think that firstly you've got to say that a draw probably suited both teams. Obviously, Chelsea a little bit more. But not the end of the world for Manchester City to draw at their closest rivals either. And I suppose a secondary factor was the that both teams were a little underpowered. Um, no Yaya Torre for Manchester City, obviously. Though another player I think they really do miss at the moment is Sami Nasri, who I think has had an excellent season up until he got his injury. And then, obviously, Chelsea were missing the thrust and whatever else that he brings to the game of Diego Costa and a bit of Cesc Fabregas' ability to uh, create chances for, for their forwards. Um, and I also think that uh, it actually started a little more open than uh, I expected. I thought it was going to be the type of pitch battle it was in the second half. Um, and I think the strange thing was that Chelsea's goal, uh, scored by Remy, which is a great move, it was almost as if that wasn't part of the plan. Very strange that they almost sat back on that and then conceded early and then seemed almost happier to be level with City than they did leading them. Very strange uh, way to play it. But Jose Mourinho, we don't actually know whether he was happy with that or not, do we? No, we don't. Uh, and Sky were trying to put a brave face on the fact that he was blackballing them, but uh, I don't know how long that's going to go on and how he can be disciplined. But the... the the rival when we're looking forward to these big games, you, you you do need a sense of rivalry as well. I don't know if that's something that's still missing between these two, uh, particularly because Man City are so new to the top table. It seems as though even the Frank Lampard cameo. If Lampard had arrived at Stamford Bridge in a Liverpool jersey, for example, I can't imagine the the fans being quite so generous. Well, that's very true. Yeah, I mean, uh, City. I mean, it is. It was two thousand eight that Manchester City became a force in English football. So it's not like it was just yesterday. But there is still something that slightly, I hesitate to use the word plastic, that's probably a little unfair, but there's still something that, that still it doesn't fit them as a big club. I think maybe that's something to do with the fact that Manchester United are in the same city. I don't know. I mean, as, as regard the Lampard thing, interesting. I mean, uh, the Chelsea press box, you're pretty near the action. You're, you're in amongst the fans. And there did seem to be a sort of civil war between the fans over the Lampard thing. Yeah. Uh, the younger generation, uh, some of them decided that he was Judas and he had, was shameless and all the rest of it. But they were shouted down by the older Chelsea heads. And there was a bit of a row, rather entertaining uh, to the right of us where we were sat. It was actually more entertaining than what was going on in the pitch, on the pitch in front of us, actually. Yeah, well, the... Just on City, uh, whatever mm. about the, the specifics on Lampard, I, I don't know if plastic is the right word necessarily. I mean, they've won two league titles in the last three years, but there doesn't seem to be any sense of authority about them, that they're going to go to Chelsea a week in Chelsea. They're going to do whatever they need to do to get the win that will that will catapult them closer to the, or move them closer to the top of the table. It seems almost as though there's, the self-confidence that should be there from winning two league titles doesn't seem to exist. I, I, I think, though, the problem, well, well, you know, John has already mentioned uh, the obvious factor that Yaya Torre and, and Aguero are, are gone, and those are two huge, or sorry, Aguero played, but he doesn't look great at the moment. He's he what, four, four matches back after injury, five matches, and uh, and, he, and he really hasn't hit form again. Yaya Torre is completely missing, and these are two players who, you know, drive the team forward, who re routinely, you know, prove to be match winners for them. And the stake were enormous uh, on the downside for them if they lost. I mean, you know, this Chelsea team, it's it's been generally pretty good at times, remarkably impressive, but occasionally very poor as the, the Bradford and Spurs games have shown. And if you're a city looking at this, you're kind of thinking if we don't lose this, the title is, is still there for us. You know, that this Chelsea team can drop points and we, and we can win this title elsewhere. But if we lose this game, it's over. You know, there's there's no way we're making up eight points on, on, on a Jose Mourinho. But team. if you're going to, if you're looking at the 
team that Chelsea had out there, yeah. you're never going to get a better chance. To, no, that's true, and they and they look tired, and you know, and yet their goal came ultimately really from a, a Courtois mistake, and you know, I mean, certainly he had a, a very good opportunity to clear the danger and and blew it pretty badly. Um, yeah, no, they they weren't impressive. They they weren't they, they weren't themselves, and I, and I take your point that they kind of don't have the sort of authority you'd expect them to have at this stage after 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 a couple of league titles. You see it in Europe, obviously, as well on, on a re- uh, consistent basis, John, that they don't seem to. Don't seem to be. A, a, I don't know if authoritative is the right word, but they don't seem to carry themselves in the way that you, you would think. I don't know if you agree with that. Maybe this is unfair because they were going away to Chelsea after all. But it just seems like it was another example of maybe just something that's missing in their personality. Well, I think part of the fact is um, they're still Manchester City, and uh, you, you're going back to that thing I was saying before. And I, I do agree with you. Plastic's the wrong word. There's still something about the, the, the club that. There's almost like a sense of disbelief there. I think when you talk about the European thing, this season might actually have changed matters there. I think they've waited for a big European night and actually had two this season, beating Bayern Munich, winning in Rome. I think that might give them a sense of belief. How they get on against Barcelona, I don't know, but I would hope and expect that they probably make a better fist of it than they did last season when... Uh, I went to the home game of that and it was almost as if they were just happy to be playing against them and it was almost an exhibition game. Um, The thing is, the City have a group of players who have been there and done that in English football. Um, Manuel Pellegrini said something after the game, which was, uh, I've seen it described as something of an afterthought, but if you look at it, uh, he said if, if City need to get to 90 points, which he thinks will win the title, they've got to win 14 from 15 games, which he thinks they're capable of doing. So I suppose, does he think that just drawing that game sets him up for the rest of the season and they've got their most difficult fixture out of the way? Or maybe Pellegrini shares that that confidence in his team that, well, maybe maybe we don't do. Um, and there's something about City that I agree... That, isn't it strange that they've won two titles in three years, yet they really don't look like or seem like the type of team that are going to build some kind of dynasty I, in English football? The, the only thing I'd say to that is, I, I thought, like, by and large, they dominated that game the other day. They, they dominated yeah. the game at Chelsea, having having looked second best to them in, earlier in the season. Both teams kind of either missing players or teams below players below form. They limited Chelsea to a goal against uh, the run of play and very, very, very few serious chances after that. And really, on another day, had Silva or Aguero really been, you know, on their game they probably would have won it. So in that sense, I don't think it's that much of a crisis. To tilt the whole team forward, that extra yard, to kind of really go for it, risks losing the game. And that, that I think, explains why, why possibly they, they weren't more dominant. 